Hi, guess what? Orazio Fantasia is a blue. Just like that. Welcome to another video on the channel. In this one, we're going to unpack the Orazio Fantasia signing. It's Fantasia, that's the truth. But anyway, Fantasia, Orazio. So, Friday night, I think Friday afternoon, a lot of us were just going about our business when this one came through. And it has been reported that he has signed a two-year deal as a delisted free agent. And that's that. If we look at the situation, 28 years old, been in the system for quite some time. I think it's undoubted that he can play and he's got an ability. However, the body's just not allowed him to play consistent football. And that's a shame. And it happens across the league with many players. So uh, let's look at it. I think his relationship with probably Vossi, Brad Ebert, Greavesy, from his time at Port Adelaide has allowed them to feel comfortable in bringing him into the group. Uh, I'm sure they can vouch for his character. He was well-loved and respected at Port Adelaide. Uh, and you, I noticed a little, a little uh, parting messages from former teammates, including Travis Boak. He's played four games in two years, which lends to probably why he's a delisted free agent. Uh, Port Adelaide uh, just ready to move in a different direction with their, their forward line. I mean, Carlton, you look at us, the area of the ground which needs the most attention of all is the forward line. I think we saw a better version of it towards the end of 2023, but I don't think it's complete yet. I think we would be remiss in our duties if we walked into next season without having addressed the forward line. Um, so we bring in a guy who's 28 years old, don't have to worry about whether or not he's uh, you know, able to play and kick goals because he's shown that he has been able to do that. Uh, you know, If we can get his body right, and it's, it's, it's just one of those what ifs. It's a big if for him. Um, I think the with him, he, he's, like I said, his age profile lends to probably it being his last chance. One more crack at it. I know you can probably play into your, you know, into your thirties, but at twenty-eight, two-year deal gets into thirty years old. I'm sure he'd be extremely motivated to to get back on the park and, and impact. Um, so I think there's a bit of a motivation piece there for him to, to prove to himself that he can get on the park and, and be fit. Uh, I believe at the time of filming this right now, he is ready. So he would walk into preseason day one and start. So that's a, that's a plus there. Um, I don't think this is going to be a massive risk, which is why I kind of like the, I like the deal. I mean, if it doesn't work out, he's a delisted free agent. I don't think he'd be commanding much of a, a piece of our salary cap. Um, so there's that. Um, he adds to a mix of small forwards who are mostly younger than him, if not all of them. Yeah, all of them are younger than him. I think his goal, his ability to kick goals and his goal presence uh, will be something that the likes of Durden, Motlop, even Owies will be able to learn from. I think he also adds a little bit of pressure in that group uh, to those younger guys who are now coming into that, you know, third, fourth year of, of their experience. And so pressure's good. Pressure is good because it keeps them on their toes. Um, and, you know, and then if he was put into the side, touch wood, let's just say we get to round eight and Orazio is playing, like I, I wouldn't be disappointed. I wouldn't be uh, worried that he wouldn't be able to impact. You know, he's got... Great tall forwards there that he can work at their feet. Um, I mean, he takes Josh Honey's spot in essence. That's that's how I'm looking at it. So, you know, there's the, there's the question: do you do you do you keep Honey on a list, or do you bring in a, a mature guy who's proven that he can play at the level? Um, so that's how I see that. Uh, the surprise factor, I think, is the underrated part of this. So was this in the works? Was this a last minute? Did it all happen yesterday? I'm sure it didn't. I'm sure there would be, have been conversations around. And I think the fact that none of this was leaked at any point, I'm very 
I think that part is the part that I'm more happy about than anything else. Like, I don't know what Arazio is going to do for us. That's the truth. I don't know, you know, best case scenario, he gets healthy, he comes in, he actually impacts, he's able to kick 25, 30 goals in a season. And, you know, we're, we're lauding what a pickup he was for us. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, the body just doesn't hold up. But I don't think in that worst case scenario, we lose much because we weren't getting much from the previous situation anyway in Josh Honey he just wasn't able to break into the side um, we are a team now who's in the window we are going for the premiership we are there we need to add pieces we need to improve so I think the, the these are the types of moves that we can now make you know we've got a, a we've built a strong enough base with this group now we find ourselves in the finals campaign we've got that experience now so anything that we can add uh, we will and we have. So I like it. I'm not getting too excited about it, but I think it's uh, it's just another sign of the development of this club in what we are now doing in off season and the types of players we're doing we're going for in the off season. So yeah, that's my take. Low risk, high ceiling. Uh, best case scenario, as I just mentioned, is is what he can offer us and. Uh, worst case, we're not really losing that much. So that was my initial reaction. What about you? How did you find the news? Where did you find it? And what do you think about it? Leave some thoughts in the comments below and let's officially welcome Orazio to the Carlton Football Club. Go Blues.